Today we're going to make it so, as we have a look at the McFarlane Toys new Star Trek The Next Generation Captain Picard. Captain Picard makes up only a two-figure introduction to the new Star Trek lineup from McFarlane Toys. The other one is one original captain of the Enterprise, and that is Captain James T. Kirk. Before engaging in this review, sorry, I had to, let's first figure out how tall Dear Captain Picard stands. The figure is at 7.4 inches in centimeters. That works out to be 18.8. The figure comes with some small accessories. It only comes with three accessories in total. One of which being, I believe this to be the Resican flute in the episode I believe is entitled Lessons, which Captain Picard is beamed onto, well not beamed onto, but his essence is put onto a dead planet Resic, where he basically lives out his life. And I believe this is the flute that he plays, the Resican flute. What's rather interesting about this is from what I remember about the episode itself and all the appearances in which Captain Picard is using this flute, I don't believe he's ever in this costume. I may not 100% be correct by that, but I know, for example, he is in his away mission outfit, which consists of the gray upper suit, the upper uh, top, in which he had the jacket over top of that, which he wore in later seasons. And he's also wearing uh, pajamas while he's playing the Reskin flute, but I don't believe he's ever wearing this outfit. I'm not 100% certain by that, but I don't believe he's ever wearing that up, uh, outfit when he is playing this flute. I'm not going to dissect this to death, but the flute itself is nicely painted in gold. And it's got a little band there of white, and it has a little kind of tassel that's draping its way down the flute itself. You can have them holding it. We'll go ahead and grab the figure itself, and you can take the flute. There's this very narrow, very narrow uh, gripping between his finger and his thumb. If you're successful enough, you can kind of pry it away. Let me just show you here. Pry the finger away from the thumb. It doesn't give you very much clearance at all, but you can have him holding the flute like that, which I guess is somewhat realistic the way he's gonna hold the flute. The other hand is way too broad. I guess you could have it still wedged in there, but this is probably the better hand to be holding the flute. Go ahead and take this off and put that to the side. Captain Picard also comes included with a phaser. Now there's no section on, there's no holstered area in which you can store the phaser if you don't have it in his hand. So you can either display it with, with it being in his hand or you can choose just not to. I mean, that's the only options you really have. Display him with it or display him without it. The way they've sculpted the hands, you can very easily somewhat easily get his thumb right on the button the firing button of the phaser and again much like the flute it seems like he holds it relatively comfortable or at least in a way that it looks natural it doesn't look like he's holding in a way that it would never work uh, you know if, if he was in the show itself with it the only other thing he comes included with is his make it so hand I guess you could use this for the flute as well, but I mean, I'm looking at the hand. I'll just take this hand off the peg. There we go. And replace the hand. I mean, I look at the hand, I think more so the, you know, make it so, make it so hand. I guess we'll just call it the make it so hand. And he does come with that as well. That's it. He doesn't really come with a whole lot. A total of three accessories. One accessory sounds seems practical, the phaser that is. Then he's got the other hand, which I guess is necessary. It doesn't really need to be included. And then he comes with a flute that again, I don't think he used while wearing this outfit. Those are the accessories. We'll put those to the side for the time being and we'll talk a little bit about this figure. Oh, okay. 
So, Captain Picard, now this is again only two figures being released so far. I think the other one is the girl from Discovery as well as Spock or the other, the next wave of figures. So this is sort of what we base this line off of, those initial released figures. This tells us what to expect from the future lineups that in this case McFarland Toys are planning to release. I have to say, Picard struggles. Not the real Picard, but this figure does struggle a bit. <laughs> Oh, where do we begin? Okay, well, we'll talk about the negatives. Let's, I guess we really won't talk negatives. We'll just talk about all the things about the figure, which just so happens to also be the negative points about the figure. We'll start with, say, colors. Now, his pants, I don't know why, but his pants come across almost like a really dark gray. I know normally, even in the show, like his shiny boots would be a, a different contrast to the matte color of his pants. But the unfortunate end of it, though, is that the pants don't seem to be the same color as the upper part of his uniform. And colors will, of course, vary in the show sometimes. Like this part here doesn't look the same color as his pants. But it does seem ever more apparent when we look at this figure. It just seems like the pants don't line up color-wise to the black bottom section of his uniform. I also went in and I looked at some stills of the show and just kind of giving me a fresh perspective, kind of doing comparing the figure to the uniforms and the way, you know, it looked in the show. I don't think it had lines running through the front. I know in the earlier seasons, the non-colored uniforms did have the very obvious zipper line running down the middle which apparently were extremely uncomfortable to wear. But I don't think the later season show, the later season uniforms, had these seam lines. In fact, actually, the whole, unif the whole front uniform looked like one, like one bit of fabric. There was no line. In fact, the line may have been on the back, but it certainly was not on the front. And yet this figure has these very obvious lines running through the front. The communicator bit pin, if anything, it is passable, but it's just covered in all this extra junk of black paint. They've gooped it around the oval area of the gold that it just looks like it's almost dirty. I guess they put the wash on there so that it would fill in those creases, but somebody forgot to take the excess paint off. It just ends up looking like he's got all this extra gooped paint on the, uh, uh, on the emblem area. The blips, I don't know if that's the 100% correct term for calling these, but the ranking blips here, little pins, little buttons here on the top there are accurate. I mean, it's not really much you could do to be wrong with these. At the very least, they are sculpted. They're not painted, so I'll give them credit for that. The sleeves and just the shirt seem unnecessarily dirty. Like, extra black paint was added for no reason whatsoever. If you look at the shoulders and you look at the sleeve just as a whole, you've got all this unnecessary added black paint that's just been added to it. Somebody, I guess, in the painting department thought, well, we have to add, we have to add you know, black aging or, or something to the, the fabric so it doesn't look as pristine. Well, here's something. These guys are in space. And unless they're on away missions, the uniforms are going to stay primarily pretty clean and pristine. All this extra black paint you added is so unnecessary. It's filled in the creases. Like I said, it's here it's not so bad, but it's really the sleeves that are the bigger culprits of all of this. It's all this extra paint wash that's been added over it, and it didn't even need to be there in the first place. Okay, so if we just recapped where we left off. The pants are a little on the light side, my opinion at least. They don't match the coloring of the black of the uniform here. It has unnecessary seam lines, which I don't think are supposed to be in the episodes or in, in the show's uniform. Unnecessary black paint that's been added to the emblem and unnecessary black paint that's been added to the sleeves. This would be the point where the figure's head sculpt would trump all of that and you would say, oh, well, at the very least, you've got a good head sculpt on Captain Picard. <laughs> Not even close. 
I should have really looked at Captain Kirk first because I do think, even though Kirk doesn't look great either, Captain Kirk, at the very least, looks a little bit more like Kirk does than Picard looks like Picard. I don't know what's happened here, but something has gotten missed from drawings to the actual concept artwork to the actual figure production. I don't feel as if this looks at all like Picard. I mean, there are some little indications. I mean, I guess if you look at it from certain angles, if you look at it like this, it's not. it does look a little bit like Patrick Stewart, seems almost the more you rotate the figure towards the front view you really notice that yeah there's some there's something wrong with the face i've been trying my best to come up with what exactly is so wrong about the face and i'm i'm on honestly stumped the lips are way too thin the eyebrows are are good thickness i think it might be just the eyes that are throwing off this figure if you just took off his eyes, that, that, there's a thought. If you took just his eyes off, the rest of the face, I think, looks enough like Captain Picard to be passable. But it's something about those eyes. I don't know if they're broad enough, like they're, maybe they're not big enough. It really distorts the overall portrait of this looking like a Captain Picard. The hair is a mixture of whites and dark grays, and I guess for that, it's pretty good. Paint... For despite for all the fact that it has all this extra stuff on it, paint's pretty good. It's pretty clean when it needs to be clean, but it's really the head sculpt that disappoints this figure. At the very most, if the head sculpt was good and all this extra stuff was all over the costume, I would be I'd be still pretty okay with it. But in all honesty, the head is a letdown. Can't wait to have a look at the book. Can't wait to have a look at Kirk after all that. Um, as for his pose Billy, his head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down as well, and you can rock it back and forth. The arms hinge outward. You can rotate the arms all the way around. He has a bend at the elbow, which also allows the forearm to rotate, and you can also rotate the hands. The upper torso does not have, does not have a crunch. However, you can rotate the, the waist all the way around. And then the legs have this... He's done it with the... Walking Dead figures as well, this split, which never looks right, really. I mean, you split that, you see these big cutaway sections of his leg, like somebody just hacked out little wedges of his inner thigh. It just doesn't look right. At the very least, you can move the legs forward and back. Uh, it does have a bend at the knee, and it rotates the lower leg. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about positives. The hidden away feature of the leg articulation, the knee articulation, is pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look like, other than a big line right there, you don't see a very obvious knee bend. I almost feel as if, as well, like the knees are in the wrong place. Maybe the knees should have been, like, right there. Right there, as opposed to where they are. It's almost as if his thigh is longer than what it should be. And his lower leg is shorter than what it should be. And between the two, it's throwing the proportions off of his lower legs. Almost as if it's making his legs look short. <sighs> oh, and then also, we can't certainly forget as well, he's got ball joints in his feet. Not that he can really do a whole lot. One thing also I forgot to mention uh, for his accessories is also that Captain Picard comes with a display stand. I can't believe I left that off the review. I guess I was so focused on what I was going to talk about for this particular figure, forgot that he does also come with a display stand. I'm guessing, without having opened up Kirk, that it's probably a uniformed display base. It's probably not going to change from character to character. Here, they've just used the classic Trek Starfleet logo, and they've omitted the oval behind it. The font is also the exact same font as classic Star Trek. So again, it makes me think that they're probably just using the, the same display stands for everything. One peg hole on the underside of his foot, right there. If you look very closely, though, doesn't it also look as well that he's supposed to have an extra peg right there? And they just simply have left it off. I don't know if it's supposed to be there. Last minute, they just decided, well, we only really need one peg hole, so why are we going to waste the budget to put another one in. I don't really know. Oh, Picard. I feel like you've been on harder missions than this. 
This poor reviewer has just dissected you to death. As a whole, I have to admit, and being a big Star Trek fan as I am, Captain Picard does come up rather short. Please believe me when I say this is a figure I really wanted to like. The idea that new Trek figures was going to be released on the market. I may not have said McFarlane was a good pick for the Star Trek line, having seen what he does with the Walking Dead figures, but I was hopeful. And then I had a look at Captain Picard. And I really do think, looking back on it, hindsight is twenty twenty. I really should have looked at Kirk first. I think Kirk was the better of the two figures, though his likeness is off as well. Picard, I think, is the worst of the two figures. He has very few accessories, still includes a flute that I don't believe belongs with this particular uniform, but I could very well be incorrect by that. He, at the very least, does come with a phaser. Okay. But then you want the figure. You can't just bank all the figure to be good solely from the accessories that come included with him. So the figure has to be good at the very end of the day. And he's not. And that saddens me because I wanted to like this figure. But the coloring is off. The legs seem weirdly sculpted. Like knees should be a little bit higher up than where they are. The extra paint on his uniform doesn't make sense. The seams on his uniform doesn't make sense. And of course the very crucial point of all of this is you have to have a good solid head sculpt and he doesn't even deliver there either there are the remnants there the outer space remnants that there is a picard somewhere in there but he just doesn't resonate well enough for me to think that that's a good enough likeness for captain picard i've seen a better sculpts for P captain picard than this one right here i really hope and this is also something that we've talked about before. Coincidentally enough, we also, also talked about this before with the McFarlane line when it came to the Stranger Things. Yes, you remember I had a look at the Stranger Things figures and 11 was the same thing. I looked at that figure, I think, first and it really soured my overall experience and wanting to pick up newer figures. Well, sure enough, there were better figures out being released. Maybe that's going to be the same thing with Captain Picard. It just so happens I looked at him first and he was the worst of the lot. Maybe future waves will have better looking sculpted figures and maybe we may even get better Picards. I'd love to see them do, uh, say for example, a Generations Picard with a new uniform. You never know. Maybe he might have a better head sculpt. But I'm just saying this, McFarlane, not that you're watching these videos, please don't use this head sculpt anymore. Or at the very least, if you're going to use this head sculpt, kind of go back and tweak it a little bit because something really is off on this guy. Anyways, today we were having a look at the McFarlane toys. This was the Star Trek The Next Generation, or really it was just under the Star Trek banner. This was Captain Jean-Luc Picard. It's nice to get a poseable Picard, but the head sculpt's really bad. Yeah. We're going to, like I said, have a look at Captain Kirk. Maybe that will redeem this line. I hope so. Uh, his review will be coming up soon. If you haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? Q just to show up and spin your ship several light years away and you have to battle a robotic menace that want to assimilate all of you? Don't know. No, no. Don't wait that, that long, man. It, I would hope that never happens anyways. <laughs> Don't let an alien race assimilate you. Assimilate you assimilate 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 you hit that little subscribe button down below assimilate down below more videos guys will be coming your way and of course if you wanted to swing by the home page check out the video section see if there's anything you may have missed hey i haven't seen that one you may say to yourself oh i haven't seen that one either mm, yeah you can go back and have a look at all of them by checking out the videos that are on the on the playlist as well as on the home page more videos guys will be coming your way so as always thanks for watching i'll see you next time